In the name of Jesus, I rebuke white dudes for Harris. I rebuke these Satanists. I, re I rebuke the LGBTQ community. It is such a deceiving tactic from the enemy. Ugh, the church. Because I was atheist my whole life. What about ripping a baby from limb to limb inside of your womb is healthcare. That's murder. The more that I'm talking about this, Christians are so upset with me. I did OnlyFans before um, I turned to Jesus. I'm not allowed to step into the parking lot of the Planned Parenthood. If I do, I'll be arrested. And this one woman, every time we say Jesus, she twitches. She she does, she does has like convulsions. No, I'm gonna go, that's what they say. That's, I'm that's gonna what kill gonna, my baby? No, I'm gonna kill my baby. Don't worry about me, you do you, you do you Jesus thing. Like, I'm gonna go in and kill my baby. And then that's when I just started to talk about Jesus. And she was in tears and I was in tears. And she said, I knew as soon as you came up to my car, I was praying before I got here. She was praying, God, if you want me to keep my baby, show me. Savannah Finch is a true Californian born in Long Beach. She was crowned as a Miss Seal Beach Teen 2013 and 2016, as well as Miss Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach 2017. Boys Beach modeling, photographing. This was Savannah's life until she found Jesus. Now she fights for the unborn by being a part of White Rose Resistance Pro-Life Group. She stands up for kids and parents' rights and, and is a true believer of God, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow, you called, you really did your research. <laughs> I did. I'm impressed. So I was uh, I'm impressed by your post yesterday. Just yesterday, I stumbled upon a post of yours about the Proposition 3. And yeah. I was like, what is that? Yeah. When did you realize what, what the hell is this? So I only got wind of it about a week or two ago. So when I got my... Um, information on the props that are going to be on the ballot. Um, we got our ballot and all the information on that. Um, I was really just doing some independent review and studying on the props because I know when we see them on the ballot uh, day of, it's very deceiving. Uh, it just the says language. Prop three, right? It just says Prop Three, and actually, um, I have the paperwork of the exact title of what it says. So, Prop Three on the ballot um, is basically saying that it just wants to make it so that um, the California Constitution will say that um, it's a federal right to marriage. So, anybody has the right to marriage. Which is quite good, right? Everyone has a right. I have a Everybody right. Everybody has a yeah. right. We live in the it, United States of yeah. America. We have Sounds the right amazing. to marriage. Sounds good. And it also talks um, in about same-sex marriage. So in the federal court, same-sex marriage is legal. So mm -hmm. what they want to do is, uh, it says the federal courts have said that the same-sex couples can marry, but there's outdated language in the California Constitution that still says that marriage has to be between, between a man and a woman. So... Basically, what uh, the LGBTQ community was really pushing this prop. Why? Because they have already the right to marriage each other. Exactly. So that's when I knew there's got to be something more to this. Mm -hmm. It's it, This is deceiving. So basically, it says that um, it's going to make it so that anybody has the right to marry. That's the, that's the literature that they're going to change in the California Constitution. So then you look at, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Anybody has the right to marry. Even kids? Kids. Uh, let's say I wanted to marry my mother. I could do so. I want to marry my dog. Anybody can marry anybody, anything. It's going to open up the floodgates for just weird and disturbing things to be going on. Let me just read the, from your post that you did yesterday. So I will definitely mispronounce those words because those words are the first time that I saw them yesterday. Polygyny. One man with multiple wives. That's Islam, right? Yes. Polyandry, one woman with multiple husbands. It will never work out. It's it's homicide in, in a month, <laughs> minimum. Yeah. Polyamory, group marriages of various, various sizes. Bigamy, being married to more than one person at a time. What? It gets it get better. Uh, Consanguine consing, marriage, consanguine marriage, married to a close relative. Autogamy, married to one's self. Adult child marriage, adults marrying children, pedophilic marriages, child child marriage, relationship between two or more minors, humans, humans and animals, marriage of humans and animals, for example, bestial marriage, right mm -hmm. from the Bible, humans and objects, objects, plants, machines, robots, holograms, holograms and AI. Yeah. That's uh, Black Mirror. Yes. One of the episodes of so the, every Black single Mirror. one of those is very disturbing. Those are all the different types of 
uh, marriages, so to speak, right? And that that's the name for those types of marriages. So when the when they want to rewrite the literature in the California Constitution that there's any type of right to marriage, that's what it's opening up the floodgates to. Um, and actually, do you want to take one guess on who is backing this entire thing that's going to go into place? No idea. Planned Parenthood. <sighs> So that should tell you everything that you need to know about it right there. The LGBTQ community is pushing it and Planned Parenthood is standing behind it. They're just so noble. They yeah. want to help people. Oh, yeah. Just in the name of love is love. Autogamy, married to oneself. I've read a, uh, an article, I want to say two months ago. There was a woman, uh, so she was married to herself and she was divorcing herself. Oh. Like, is this the only problem that the, pro the world has to solve? whether you can marry yourself or not, and why would you do that? So marriage is basically what? It's a responsibility for, uh, for the, the one unit, which is a man and a woman, for instance, right now, right? Mm -hmm. And according to the taxes, uh, they say buying a house or a car, loans, and et cetera, this is why it was supposed to be like, you know, let's say in the last 200 years. But if we go back to biblical times, Marriage is not, men is not mentioned even once in, in the Bible, but it mm -hmm. says uh, in Genesis 2.24, Therefore sh shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. This verse, verse des describes the creation of marriage by God when a man and a woman become one new entity. So they want to just rewrite everything yeah. that comes from the Bible. Everything. Anything that God has something to do with, they want to completely destroy and dismantle. And they do that by taking God's word and changing what words mean. So you think about what is a man? What is a woman? Well, if they want it to apply to their to their standards and not God's standards, then they completely dismantle what the, the actual meaning of the words are. And that's exactly what they're trying to do in the state of California with Prop 3 right now. They're trying to completely dismantle the meaning of marriage. So on the ballot on November 5th, or even right now in California, right? You can yeah. vote early. Yeah. You see on the ballots if all those, those are going to be six propositions? I believe there's between six or eight. Six or eight. Yes. Yeah, so eight. you're basically going to vote yes or no, right? Yes, correct. So Prop 3, yes or no? Vote no. <laughs> Vote no on Prop 3. What about other props? Um, so, you know, there are a lot about just where uh, finances or spending are, are going to go for housing or whatnot. But another one that's very important to vote yes on is Prop 36. So what Prop 36 is going to do is going to make it so that people who are drug dealers um, or distributing drugs are going to be convicted of a felony rather than a misdemeanor. And I actually was just talking to Sheriff Chad Bianco at an event. Do you, are you familiar with Sheriff Chad yeah, Bianco? Yes, he's very awesome. And so so I was asking him um, when I saw him at an event because a lot of people right now, they're worried about fentanyl. It's, it's an epidemic that's going on in this country, even just with uh, law and order out of control and the law lawlessness that's going on. I said, do you believe that Prop 36 will be a good path of criminalizing these criminals? And he said, yes, that he does believe that Prop 36 in the state of California will help. It will put legislation in place that will make crime punishable again. So that is a prop that definitely needs to be voted yes on. But the key word of that is again. So it was a felony once, then it was changed to misdemeanor. Yes, the legislation, all the legislation that was good and in place in California has been dismantled. And so we're working so hard to make crime crime again so um and vote, that was yes, done on by, by the by the help of uh, prop 47 yes i believe so 2014 for 10 years yes you hopeful or hopeful is that the Prop 36 is going to pass? I'm hopeful. Um, there's been many different organizations um, that have tried to get similar literature on this ballot. Um, for example, there's a group of parents who have lost their children to fentanyl. And I even went to one of the cases um, where they they were going to sentence the the drug dealer. And he doesn't, if you, in the state of California right now, if you're a drug dealer and you distribute fentanyl to somebody and that fentanyl takes that person's life, they don't get charged for murder. They just get charged in possession of drugs. It's terrible. But possession and selling, those are two different things. Yes. Do you have any explanation why was this done in the first place? No. I, I I'm the, not sure. 
I had Nick Wilson on my podcast and he said, they're saying just you have to be compassionate. You have to be compassionate for the drug dealers and all those criminals. Yeah, and why is that? Criminals. People are victims of crimes and it's like the victims are the ones that have to reap the consequences and the people who are the bad guys, they just get away. Actually, I'd like to share a story sure. of this same, same example that happened to me last week. So believe it or not, I was at a store um, and there I was going to purchase something and I was in line to pay and a man came up behind me and I could tell just by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is something not right with this man. What place was, was that? On Orange County? Yes, it, well, it was in Orange County. That's an amazing place. For those of you guys that live not in California, Orange County is the safest uh, It's one of the safest places, yeah, especially because the, the, the our, our district attorney, Todd Spitzer, he's tough on crime. I mean, there's billboards in LA that say, yes. keep LA out of OC. Um, and so Todd Spitzer, the district attorney, he's very strict on punishing crime. He says, we will prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. God bless him. God bless him. Um, so with that being said, this, this man came up behind me and he was on edge. I couldn't tell if he was homeless or mentally ill, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I knew something was not right. So I was taking a look at him as he was coming up behind me, coming to the cash register. And I saw what I had believed to be a gun in the front of his pants. And he went up past me to the cash register and he started playing around with the, the landline telephone that they had. And I believe that I had saw, seen a gun in his pants. So I knew I have to, I have to get out of this store because I had such a bad feeling about it. So I'm walking out towards the exit and this man gets in a discrepancy with the woman at the cash register because he's upset about something. Something is unfolding here. So I go into my purse to call 911 and he turns around and he sees me. And he pull, he reaches into his pants, pulls out what I had thought to be that gun. He pulled out what looked to be a gun, pointed it at me, chased me out of the store, all the way out to the parking lot, to my car. I was able to get away, call 911. He was hiding in the parking lot across the street. When the cops got there, that man took off running, dropped everything that he had on him, and the cop came up to me and he said, is this what you saw? And it was a brandished gun. It was a fake gun. So thank God. Thank God it was fake. Thank God it was fake. But with that being said, that man had the right to act like that. He assaulted that woman at the cash register, then assaulted me, was brandishing a weapon, and that man got away. It's like what has happened in this state. And, and, and I was shocked to have had that happen to me in Orange County of all places because it's very safe. Yeah. But the law and order is out of control. It's not right. So we feel it. So we live here in the Valley of uh, Los Angeles. So we moved here 2023 April. So 14 months we live here, right? Mm -hmm. So once we moved here, not many homeless were, were here. Mm -hmm. Now there are, I want to say, two to three times more of them. Mm -hmm. In 18 months, every day we hear the helicopters, twice, mm -hmm. three times, four times a day. Mm -hmm. Police sirens every day, I want to say, up to every five hours. Mm -hmm. So my wife has this app, Citizen. 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 It's great. It's a good like app. One and a half miles, two miles away from you. Yep. Assault, this, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. it, it has never been like that even 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse and worse and mm -hmm. worse. So I just pray that on November 5th, you're going to vote accordingly. Yes. And this is about to change because we, we, we definitely, families especially, they can't live like this. They're going to move, move out from California. Yeah, the lawlessness is out of control. And I've always said I love Orange County. California, I'm just very disappointed with at the, at the time with, you know, the legislation that's in place and just the policies and the governor is terrible. And this state is just absolutely out of control, but I'm so grateful and so blessed to be able to live in an area that, that is so safe and that does persecute crime. But I've always said the moment that Orange County, it becomes unsafe, I'm out of here. I'm out of this state. I want to stay here in California and fight the good fight. I believe that if every if all the good people leave now, that California will just be completely demolished. But 100%. it is so important to stay here and fight the good fight. But at what point am I not going to be able to stay here to do that? So to be honest, I'm from Europe. So we've been almost to all European countries, right? Spain, we lived in Spain for two years, Italy, uh, Germany, Belgium, Norway, all you name it, right? There is no place like California. Mm -mm. First of all, there is no place like the United States of America, mm -hmm. amazing country. And uh, California is is just a piece of art. Like you've got the mountains, you've got ocean, you've got those na national parks, mm -hmm. you've got the Lake Tahoe, you've got Yosemite, you've got everything. And at the same time, you just can't live, work, earn money, raise a family and be safe. 
just yeah. because you never know once you go to a, to a store maybe that that is going to be your last encounter with a with a criminal in your life that's it yeah it's craziness it's what true. about other props so is there any any prop like proposition three is like a trojan horse yes prop three i would say prop three and prop 36 are most important and i believe for the rest of them to be voting no. So vote yes on Prop 36 and the rest of them were just, oh, there's another prop. I'm not sure. You could look up on your computer. I believe it's Prop 6. Mm -hmm. Prop 6 um, has to do with labor in prisons. So essentially what this prop is trying to say is that there are prisoners who shouldn't have to do work in the prison. So if they want to like sleep, sweep the floors or they want to clean up in the cafeteria, that they have to be willing and wanting to do that work, not forced to do it. And so Prop 6 will say no forced labor on prisoners, which is just ridiculous because they, they shouldn't be lazy. They should be held to a standard to be wanting to grow and do better. And if we're going to tell them that they can't. And that's prison, not jail. In yes. Pr in prison, in prison, people are for. I, believe, uh, I, I don't know if it's crimes. prison and jails. Um, uh, California Proposition 6 remove involuntarily served as punishment for crime amendment. Yes. Yeah. And so, then the other ones are just like money and funding to Medi Cal or schools. And um, they're just. It's, it's hard with those props because it's like, yeah, we want funding to go to schools. Like Prop 2 is funding for schools, but it's hundreds of millions of dollars and we don't know where that funding is going to go. So I'm always very weary on those props. So it's not necessarily that I lean one way or the other. I'm, I'll probably be voting no on most of the, uh, every other one, though. So you joined the uh, White Rose Resistance a, one, uh, a month ago only, right? Yes. When did you find God? Two years ago. Two years Maybe ago. Maybe going on three years now. Tell me about the story. Okay, so let's see, where do I start? So I actually became a believer of Jesus because of my passion for politics. So my senior year of high school, Donald Trump was running versus Hillary Clinton, and I was in a like government debate type of class my senior year. And so we had an assignment, uh, go watch the debates, and then tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to debate amongst one another. So I didn't know who was president at the time. I didn't have an opinion on politics at all. So I'm watching these um, debates, and I became a really big fan of Donald Trump. I thought that um, he had a good sense of a moral compass, and I just felt a lot of evil and disgustingness coming from the other side. So long story short, I became a big fan of Donald Trump. And you knew nothing about the Hillary at that time? No, I didn't know anything about either one of them. So I had a very free thinking experience at that time because I was able to really think for myself. So I became a big fan of Donald Trump. Um, and then I'm, I'm on fire for politics. I'm, I'm learning so much what I felt about was the truth, right? I felt like Hillary Clinton was a liar and Donald Trump was someone that stood up for the truth and just common sense. So I'm on fire for politics and after high school, people are like, you know, you've got such a passion for speaking on the truth, speaking about the things that are going on. You've become so knowledgeable and factual about it because I, I understood that it was so important that if you know what you're going to talk about, you need to know the facts. So I was doing a lot of studying on Donald Trump's policies and the things going on. And how did school react to you being a Trump supporter? Um, let's just say I quickly figured out how progressives act when you are a Donald Trump supporter. And that was Long Beach? It was in Newport Beach. Newport Beach. It was in Newport Beach, yeah. So I, I remember being, I think I was one of the only people in my class that sided with Donald Trump. Uh, mind you, at the time, I had moved from Los Alamitos to Newport Beach my senior year with my mom and I because my, my mom was um, with a man uh, for majority of their life. We had lived together. I, I referred to him as my stepdad, mm -hmm. and he had just passed away. And that's why we moved to Newport Beach, and he was a police officer. So when I was listening to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, Hillary was talking a lot about how she wanted to defund the police and the police were bad people and all they do is kill minorities. And I knew that to not be true because I knew my stepdad and I, and I knew all of these police officers that I was surrounded by were full of love. And so that was one of the things that I really resonated with at that time with Donald Trump was how he really supported the police. And I almost fell at that time with everything going on. It was like I needed to stick up for my passed away stepfather. So I remember also being very pro law enforcement and saying those things in front of my teacher and my teacher kind of reacting in the way that I was some type of bigot or <laughs> I, I really like every name in the book. I felt that's that's how she felt against me because I 
I was pro-police and that must mean that I don't care for minorities. And that was 2015, 2016? That was 2016. Yeah, 2015 going into 2016. Even prior to BLM? Yes. Yeah, that t the tensions were already rising. Yes, tensions then. almost. They were already starting that narrative of the anti-police rhetoric. So after high school, I've got this big, I'm on fire for this. I'm a huge fan of Donald Trump. I love his policies. And I was so excited for him to win. I couldn't vote at the time because I wasn't old enough yet, but I was telling everybody I knew. And so I wanted to get involved in politics. I felt like I really had a, a calling and a passion for this. So I got involved with an organization called Turning Point USA, mm -hmm. which is Charlie, Charlie Kirk. Are you familiar with Charlie? Of course. And so I had what was called a hub. So they usually have chapters at high schools, but I was not going to high school. Or I, I actually, I, I mean to say I wasn't going to college, but I was just out of high school. So I've, I was kind of in a weird thing where I couldn't, I didn't have um, an opportunity to be a part of Turning Point because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be on college campuses. So the, per the person at Turning Point told me that I could have a hub and I was setting up tables in Newport Beach to kind of do the same thing they'd be doing on college campuses. And so uh, someone from Turning Point told me, hey, Charlie Kirk is coming to town to speak. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? Because you know he doesn't come to California that often. And I said, where is he gonna be speaking? And they said, at this church in Chino Hills. And I was like, mm -hmm. ugh. The church, because I was atheist my whole life. And I was so turned off to the idea of going to see Charlie Kirk at the church. But I was like, you know what? He's going to be talking about politics, not church stuff anyway. So I'm going to go. I got there four hours early. I was one of the first people in line. I was so excited. So I get inside this church, Calvary Chapel of Chino Hills. Jack Hibbs? Jack Hibbs. And little did I know that day, that message was not necessarily going to be about politics. It was about the new world order, the things going on in the world, and what God has to say about it. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I, I kept hearing God is the way, the truth, and the life. And God has an answer for every single one of these things that's going on in the world. And I, and I couldn't refute it. It was too, it, I just had this, at the time I didn't know, the Holy Spirit was touching my heart. And Only I said, the one who has experienced this, they know what you're talking about. Yes. So at that time, because I was so emotional, I was crying and I, and I didn't know where these feelings were coming from. But, but now looking back on it, I know the Holy Spirit was, God, God was speaking to me that day. And I said, if I'm someone who is a truth seeker and all I do is run around and tell people about what I believe to be the truth, and you're telling me God is the way, the truth, and the life, I have to seek this. And so I was like, well, this church is probably a good church to go to because Jack Hibbs, he talks about politics and I like mm -hmm. politics, right? Little did I know it's not necessarily politics, it's biblical issues that have become political. But so I started going to that church and, and if, within a few sermons of listening to Jack Hibbs, um, I remember one day he did an altar call and I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh, my, my, my story, my testimony is very similar to yours. So uh, I'm 36 now. For 30, almost 35 years, I was an atheist as well. I hated God because of, mm -hmm. I'm from Lithuania. Back in Lithuania, 90% of uh, population are Catholics. Mm -hmm. So I always aligned Catholicism with God. I always thought that the churches, the uh, the repentance, everything that's going on with the pedophilia, with the scandals, mm -hmm. with the money laundering, etc. in the churches equals God, right? So I, I didn't want to be the part of this, uh, I want to say, a cult. Once I got to the U.S., I was like, wait a minute, so churches are not like uh, in, back in Lithuania and back in Europe, right? They're not Catholics, they're Protestants. They worship uh, God, uh, they praise God in many different ways. They sing and etc. The pastors can have kids, they, they dress like normal people. The churches look like just uh, northern uh, buildings without this uh, uh, gold and all that stuff, without all those crazy traditions that are not... Uh, not for, just not for me. And I remember myself prior to that in 2022, I was, uh, we were uh, going, on a road, going on a road trip with my wife and I was just sitting, driving and I was having this idea. So everything that is go, was going on right then uh, in the world with the transgenderism, with the kids, mutilation of kids, emascula uh, emasculate men, etc. Maybe that was the God's idea to show me personally what the world will look like 
if the world turns against the God. Mm. And I was like, maybe that's the idea. And that was the pin <laughs> pinnacle point wow. when I realized maybe I should dig into Christianity more mm. to know what who Jesus was, what he was all about, etc. Then I saw a few, then I saw one podcast uh, with Dennis Prager. I read his book. And that's it. The journey just started. Wow. And I was baptized uh, three weeks ago. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. That's so amazing. It, isn't it so neat to see, like, looking back on my testimony, like, the types of people that the Lord used to bring me to yeah, Him? Yeah, you would, you, would, you would never think of it, right? Yeah. So if Like, God used Dennis Prager to, to help plant seeds for yeah. you. It, it, so God used one specific podcast episode for me to... To have this uh, want and need yeah. to get into to dig in uh, deeper, to buy his book, read his book, and then the journey. Wow! Started. So does if, Dennis Prager know this? No. Oh, you ought to share him with that. He'd be very blessed by that. I know I got to share my testimony just very briefly with Charlie Kirk uh -huh. in person, and I just know that he was so blessed by it because you know people like Dennis and Charlie like they get a lot of flack. Yeah. But for me to tell Charlie like, hey because of the things that you were talking about, you helped lead me to salvation. Yes. Like you helped bring me to eternal life. So yeah. thank you for that. So next time you're getting screamed at on a college campus, just remember that your boldness and your bravery helped lead me to salvation in Jesus Christ. Yeah, one person at a time. Yes. And if you if you were tell, uh, if you ever told me like five years ago that I'm gonna be baptized here in the US and yeah. I'm gonna go to church and read the Bible, you're an idiot? Yeah. There's no way. I know There's how no that way. feels, yeah. Uh, Lithuania is a very interesting country. So lots of people uh, of Lithuania are Catholics, but they're very specific Catholics. So even in my family and the, in the families of my friends, we always celebrated Christmas, right? It's mm -hmm. a big, big uh, holiday in, in the whole country. Easter as well. Some people go to church, but I would bet... I would bet 100% that they haven't even touched the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're this kind of uh, Christians. So looking back now, I I can't recall even one friend that was a true Christian, a true believer. Mm. Maybe but still he, celebrating Christmas. Yes. It's just... I mean, just I a, see that a, a lot here. Yeah, nice holiday, yeah. gifts, yeah. family yeah. gatherings, yeah. just a, a table of uh, full of food. Mm -hmm. That's it. Not, nothing more. It's almost like they're celebrating the pagan version of Christmas. That's a good point with the Christmas tree. Yeah. So the big or Santa. Santa. Yeah, Santa, that made up fictional character. Same with same with Easter. So even God has opened my eyes to this as well. Even with Easter, Easter is a pagan holiday because of the, the eggs, the eggs, the bunnies, just the whole root of Easter. But what we should be celebrating that week is Resurrection Sunday. Yeah which we call as Christians Easter. So I even know a lot of people who are very rooted in Jesus and they are celebrating Resurrection Sunday, but they say, Happy Easter, you know? And I'm like, we should be saying Happy Resurrection yes. Sunday. Like, let's completely leave that that paganism out of it. So that's been like a a new conviction of mine is specific, specifically celebrating Resurrection Sunday and leaving the Easter part out of it. And same same with Christ, Christmas, like leaving all of the pagan roots out of it. Not the Santa Claus, not that, just all about Jesus. But the Christmas tree is beautiful. It is. And you have to you have to get the star on top of the Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> but the star is satanic. Is it? Yeah, I don't know too much about the star, actually. So it has five ages, oh, right? Oh, my gosh. And it's red. I didn't even think <laughs> about that. Yeah, so Christmas, Christmas tree. Where does the, do you know where the pagan roots of the Christmas tree come from? Well, I've not do too, done too I, much I, research I've, on the tree. I did the research, but that uh, that was like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't recall it right I'm now. I'm gonna but refresh the, But that's on definitely that. pagan from mm. uh, pagan times. What about your mom? How did she react to you becoming a Christian? So she was actually with me at that time. So my parents, uh, before they got divorced, they were Jehovah's Witness. So I was a Jehovah's Witness at a very young age, too young to have any memory of anything. Just I just remember not celebrating holidays and going door to door. It's pretty much and all. And no birthdays. And no birthdays. Yeah, no birthdays. So that's pretty much all of the memory that I have of it. And then I remember when they got divorced... I don't know that just kind of we didn't talk about religion we didn't talk about any of those things so growing up i was atheist my parents were i don't i don't know if they were atheist or just i don't know what they were to be honest um but my mom was joining me going to jack hibbs church mm -hmm. and she was with me when i did that altar call and so as i become became um stronger and walking in my 
in my walk with Jesus Christ, she was following along with that. That's awesome. And now she's a born again believer as well. So That's awesome. it's amazing. So you found Jesus at what age? 18? I was about 18. Yeah. 18. End of 2021. So yeah, about, about three years now. I'm 25 now. So I was about 21. Prior to you becoming a follower of Christ, what was your sense on abortions? Oh, I had a sense of being pro-life, but that was because my only moral compass and oh, really? was Donald Trump. And I remember I remember Hillary Clinton saying things about late-term abortions and it's okay to kill babies. And I think at that time, I just realized it's wrong to kill your child. Like that's that's not okay. How could anybody think that's okay, whether you're a Christian or not? Well, they're saying it's a uh, healthcare for, for women. Yeah, and I saw right through that. I, I was like, what is... What about ripping a baby from limb to limb inside of your womb is healthcare? That's murder. And even as an atheist, I knew that that was wrong. So a year ago, my stance on abortion was like, yeah, why not? But not up to eight to six, seven, eight or nine months, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe 12 weeks, maybe 10 weeks, etc. Then I got to to uh, live action org uh, Lila. website. Lila Rose. Yeah, they're great. And I saw that video. Yes. And that video was like opened my eyes because prior to that, if you asked me how abortion is uh, being done, I was like, I have no idea. They 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 do maybe they like a, do it with a like a with a vacuum cleaner or something like that. Mm -hmm. But once I saw that video, I was like, Is this for real? And the woman that is describing the process is the one that did uh, former abortionist yeah. over five hundred abortions. Five hundred. I was like, so limb by limb? Yes. Then smashing the, the head of it. This is for it's real? It's awful. And once you see that, you can't unsee yes. it. Yeah. And I, when I talk to people who are pro-abortion, or even a lot of people say, well, I wouldn't have one, but I think it's okay for somebody else to have one because that's their right to do so. I say, tell me what you know about abortion. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. Magic happens. Hey, have you ever seen a video on how abortion is done. And I have shown many people that same exact video that you're talking about, and it has made them pro-life. Those videos alone, when you actually have like some type of tangible way to see how mm -hmm. an abortion is done, and you can see that darkness and that evil, you can't unsee it. No, there's no chance. There's no chance. It's terrible. I want, Every time I watch those videos or I show them to somebody, I it brings me to tears every single time. It's hard to watch those videos. So I have, a, back in Lithuania, I have a pretty big following. So I do, from time to time, I do videos in my uh, native language in Lithuanian. So once I turned to, to Christ, I did a video about uh, on abortions and mm -hmm. I mentioned, mentioned that video. And the people, I had I have had so much hate. Mm. I have never experienced it before. Wow. Yeah. Like, how can you do that? How can you say that? These are w women. These are their choices and etc. And uh, others were saying like up to 12 weeks. And I was asking them, okay, so let's say 11th week, right? 11 weeks, six days, 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. It's okay to do an abortion. Once it's uh, 12th week, something magical happens. Yes, in then all of a sudden second, it's not you okay. You can do it. What happens in that split second? You don't understand. Da, 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 da. Hate, hate, hate over hate. Mm -hmm. What is the difference even between a baby in a ninth month and at the eighth week? It's just, it's still a child. It's still yes. a human being. It's still a soul. It's still a soul. It looks different. Yes. But it's still, still the same. This, yeah. That's why even with people say, oh, I think it's okay up to the eighth week. It's like, no, it should not be okay, period. At any time of its stage of development, it's not okay. It's a human being and it's a soul the entire time. Like you said, it's not okay. Tell me about uh, the moment when you realized that IVF is pretty demonic as well. Recently. So I have really been devout on walking a close walk with Jesus the last couple of months. I've been born again for about three years now, mm -hmm. but just within the last year, I have really been convicted to be walking a close walk. And the more that I pray to Jesus and the more that I have this relate this close relationship with him, the more he convicts me and the more he, he takes the veil off for me to see through things, the more that he gives me discernment and gives me wisdom. And as I've entered this pro-life ministry and the things that he's shown me, I pray to him, Lord, Lord, show me the truth about things. And he has really shown me the demonic side 
of IVF. And that is something that I've been trying to talk to people about and, and wake people up about because it is such a deceiving tactic from the enemy. It truly is. The more that I've been learning about IVF, I mean, the fact, you know, and, and I understand that people are infertile and they cannot have children. And I think during that time, it is so important to have faith and to rely on the Lord as we do for everything else, because it's not about having temporal faith. It's about having that saving faith and trusting in Jesus for everything. And I think during that time when you are struggling with infer infertility, you need to be rely relying on Jesus. But who are we to say, all right, you know, I'm having infertility issues. So we're going to create a baby outside of the womb and we're going to go against the way that God designed it. I think that right there is is wrong is is demonic in unnatural. itself it's un, it's unnatural because god says and god has designed a very specific way to, for you to have a child and, and the process yet, of it is amazing in the, the process of it everything about it god god designed us to be married between a man and a woman for us to, go, to be fruitful and to and to multiply and he created a very specific way through the womb to do that so if that's not working out for you, you want to defy God's natural way of doing that. And you're creating an embryo in a Petri dish, and you're really causing room for error. You're, when you go against God's perfect plan, you're creating a path for error. And so um, the more that I've been learning about it, it's so wrong. And the embryo is not one but dozens. Yeah, multiple. So and those are people basically. Yes, because if, if we believe that we are pro-life and conception starts at the moment of birth, and you're creating embryos in a petri dish and you're creating 20 of them and let's say you implant plant one and okay that doesn't work and plant two and then maybe on the third or fourth or fifth time let's say you're successful and then you become pregnant you're just going to discard the rest of the embryos that are those are children Basically. those are souls those are those are beings just very very young yes just very very young and and then to say oh, we're just going to toss them, or oh, we're just going to throw them away. Or people say, well, you know, Savannah, you know that you can donate those embryos. So now we're just tossing around children. <laughs> donate? Yeah, donate. You can donate them. So you can donate your already made embryos. Rather than freezing them, they can give you the option to donate them. And I actually know a lot of people who are pro-life and don't want to see those embryos discarded. So they will, they will take them and implant them rather than having them discarded. They're playing gods. They're playing God. So AJ on the podcast, he told me a story about the one uh, couple that had two, had two daughters. They wanted a son. So they were doing IVFs. Yeah. How is that not defying God? Hey, I've had two girls, but now I want a boy. Yeah. And so maybe it wasn't God's will or plan for me to have a boy, but I'm, I'm God now. And so I'm going to take my own route of going forth and getting a, a, a male child. And, and, and it's sad because the more that I'm talking about this, Christians are so upset with mm. me because they are convicted. I, I just don't think that people have realized with IVF becoming so popular that it is such a moral issue. Mm -hmm. And so pointing out that moral issue really convicts people. Because I've talked to a lot of people about it saying how wrong IVF and they say, well, you know, I've done IVF. But the point of Christianity is you can be forgiven. Yes. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Exactly. And he will forgive you. Yes, that's exactly right. And I, I also think a lot of people, when I do talk about IVF and um, they say, well, you can't judge people. or you, It's all about not, not judging. But I say, if I don't point these things out to you, then do I not love you? Right? It's not about it's not about judging other people. It's about telling you about what God says about these things and helping correct your path in hopes that you can turn to Jesus, like you said, and repent and do the right thing. Because not sharing the truth in love is unloving. Mm -hmm. And the same time, uh, the same thing is, oh well, I did an abortion. Am, am I a bad person? Mm -hmm. If you repent now, no, you're not. Yeah, you're Just forgiven. ask for forgiveness. Jesus will forgive you. What was in the past was in the past, right? Jesus was crucified for your past. Exactly. So it doesn't mean you can be a Christian, you can be a believer, and you can be uh, forgiven. Yes, You can't exactly just ask right. for forgiveness. So you, you mentioned this thing, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. So the same thing happened to me, I want to say last year, with the entertainment. Music, mm. movies. I can't watch a movie right mm -mm. now. It's like, if I know this man, this actors or actress's stance on, for instance, abortion and said. I'm not going to watch this movie because exactly I know right. she's demonic. 
I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch a Quentin Tarantino's movie any, uh, anymore mm-hmm. because I know he stands on uh, multiple issues. That's it. Same with me. I don't listen it, to any secular so music narrow. either. Yes. Or the words. I, just... Everything in that in that entertainment industry and the music industry right now is demonic, and it, it's isn't it such a blessing to you for 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 God to have taken that veil off for you to realize those things because everything that we do in this life is to honor the Lord. And so I ask myself, is watching this movie honoring the Lord? Is listening to this song honoring the Lord? And most of the time it's no. That industry is so polluted and so corrupted and so demonic that just as you, I try to stay as far away from it as possible. It, it, it'll ruin your mind. It'll ruin your way of thinking. So I remember myself, so I'm 36. I remember myself watching movies from 1990, being a five-year-old, seven-year-old, okay? And I watched those movies. In, in, in a few mo- movies, you could encounter some sex scenes, right? Mm-hmm. But sex scenes that are now shown in the movies or TV shows is like pornographic. It is. And it's the, it's not even just a clip. It's like the entire movie. Yeah. Sometimes I watch these movies and I'm like, did they have to put that in there? Yeah. Was that a necessary part of nothing this film? Nothing would change if you wouldn't get this scene. Exactly. Like exactly. And they're so perverted. Back then, it was like more erotic, right? Yes. You could see an, an, an ass. And it's full porn. Yeah, now, now it's, it's like full porn. pornographic. Mm-hmm. And those are TV shows on Netflix, HBO, on, uh, movies. It's even you moving mean, into the kids' shows. You're yeah, seeing it. Yes. Where they're trying to infiltrate it in there as well. Uh, music videos. Yeah. They're just twerking, dancing like this. And at the same time, they're saying, we're feminists, right? We're for the for the women's and we, we, for the women and women's rights. But you twerk on the on the stage, mm-hmm. or That's even so like, disrespectful. or even like Lil Nas X in his video when he was twerking on the cross yeah. and stripping on the cross. It's the most blasphemous video I had ever seen in my life. A lot of these music videos, I look at how dark they are, and I'm thinking, this is the video that this that that person sold their soul to. Oh no, they're saying he's so brave, and I will say, if you're so brave, right, you're so cool. Do the same thing with Islam. Mm-hmm. Mark Muhammad, mm-hmm. Mark Allah. We'll see what happens. You're so you're such a cool dude, right? Yeah. Why did why Do is it, it only Jesus yeah. that's mocked? If Jesus is not the one true Lord, which He is, how come you only choose to mock Jesus? How come you only use Jesus's name in vain? Why is it always Jesus? Yeah, it's uh, the Olympics, right? The opening scene. Oh. You're so brave. That's that's an art, contemporary mm-hmm. art. Okay. Oh yeah, people Mark say, Muhammad. oh, it's just art. It's just Mark art. Muhammad. Yeah. I dare you. I dare you. Mm-hmm. A few people did with Charlie Charlie Hebdo like 15 years ago with the, with the magazine in uh, France that was, or Sweden. They cut their, head, their heads off. Mm. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. But you know that you can't mark their prophet. You can't mm-hmm. mark their God. Mm-hmm. Allah is untouchable, right? You can depict them. You can't do anything with this. Mm-hmm. But Jesus, ah, that, that's the guy. He was he was walking the earth. He was just a human being. We, we can mock him. Mm-hmm. At the same time with with music, I remember myself being a kid and I was listening to the music and I would say like like 90% of the music was about love, mm-hmm. a man's love to a woman or, or vice versa. You can't find a love song right now, no, no chance. No. But what has, I, I, I can't, I can't uh, find the tipping point. Yeah. When, when did, did it the, change? When did it get so out yeah. of hand? It's like switched. Immediately, day and night. Yes. Like overnight. And it was like when and how and why. Why? Why? There's a reason. Because times are moving very quickly. I think a lot of this stuff started during COVID. I think that a lot of people's eyes were starting to be awakened about the things going on and the corruption. And that's when people really started to ask questions. Do you feel the same way? Yes. With the music, with the corruption, with the lockdowns, with the health industry, mm-hmm. they told you masks work. No, they don't. They don't. This thing works. Mm-hmm. Mm, after four years, kind of doesn't. They don't work. Mm-hmm. They push too hard. Oh, and how dare you ask questions about it? We're going to force you to do all these things. But if, then if you ask, ask questions about it, yeah, yeah. we're going to shut you up. We're going to mm-hmm. censor you. We're going to cancel you. You will be fired from your job. And I think that they were trying to see how much they could control people. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, a lot of people were controlled. But a lot of people fought back. And those are the people that were asking the questions. And that they were saying, I think something something's up here. And I, I think that was a really big time in my life because that's when I was asking a lot of questions mm. too. And and God really opened my eyes to a lot of things going on during that time. Just uh, just today, I saw a guy driving a car with his mask on. There oh. are still people that wear ma- masks. How did, brave of him. Did you know that? Thank you for your service, yeah, sir. Yeah, thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you for, for your, your service. Help. 
Uh, did you know that in Bay Area, the mask mandates are up again? Uh, well, yeah, because it's election season. <laughs> They're winding uh, up again. People fall for it again. People fall for it. Do you think if they do the same thing right now that they did in 2020, you people will, would uh, fall once again for it? Oh, 100%. Really? I think I think most of the people that fell for it the first time I will easily fall for it again. I think they've been unfortunately so brainwashed and so deceived. And I think a lot of people have woken up. But there's a lot of people that are so sheepish and they're so blind to the things going on. But I feel like... In 20, uh, since 2020, a lot of people, some part of people woke up, right? A lot of people did wake up. And the other part went on the opposite side. Berserk. Yeah. So the distinction between those is huge. Mm-hmm. We can't even talk to each other. Mm-mm. And they're angry. So Most of polarized. the time, they're just angry. Mm-hmm. Just give me, lay out the facts. Mm-hmm. They can't lay, no. lay out the facts. I, I call angry. it cognitive dissonance. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. What about your friends? What, what is your friend's stance on abortions? Did well, you lose lots of them? Um, I think when I did become a born-again believer, people, you know, at the time they were maybe like excited for me because, oh, that's a good thing. You know, she's a Christian. And then I was just kind of a, a Christian for the first um, two years. And then within the last year, I've really started to walk a close walk. And that's pretty much when I've lost all of my friends. Really? Um, Men and women? Men and women. Um, I'm so thankful, though, to have my mom and my husband who are so like-minded like me and that are they are born-again Christians and they do have that discernment and they do have that wisdom. But I think everybody else has just really strayed away from me in walking a close walk, um, especially on my abortion stance. But why do women are so obsessed with this? There's, they're saying, just like you mentioned before, I, I'm not doing an abortion, right? I would n- never do that. But I stand for women, for them to have a right to do so. I think there's so many aspects to that too because we've been so deceived. We've been so lied to. When the media tells you over and over and over that abortion is health care, you, you start to buy into these lies. It takes a really strong-minded person to see through it. And I think having the Lord in my life, I've been able to see through that. And I believe most people who are pro-abortion are not Christian or they don't know the Lord. And so they're even more deceived because they're letting Satan, Satan is, Satan is winning in that situation. Um, but even Christians that I talk to are so upset about me talking about abortion because they say that I'm judgmental oh, you need to love thy neighbor. What if they're raped? Or what if they're, you know? you do. You love the baby that's inside the womb. Yeah, I can love the mother and the baby. And that's when I have to remind them, if I'm not sharing the truth and love with them, then I'm unloving. If I truly love somebody, then I'm going to tell them, do you know what God says about abortion? That you were wonderfully and fearfully made and that God knew you before you were in the womb. And that even one of the scriptures in the Bible there, it says there are seven abominations to the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of those seven is hands that shed innocent blood. Mm-hmm. And so I don't truly love somebody if I'm not going to tell people about those things. That would be unloving. So I even get a lot of flack from Christians. What's, what was for you the, the, the most difficult thing once you turned to Christianity? Having to make the sacrifice of putting... God's will above my wants and needs, truly sacrificing everything that I loved and that I wanted and that I had my heart and soul in and completely just turning to Jesus, like leaving the love for money behind, leaving the lifestyle. I mean, I was was doing OnlyFans before. Oh, really? Yes. I did not know that. I did OnlyFans before um, I turned to Jesus. There was a period of time that I was doing that. And so having to leave all of those things that like I loved and I knew and just having to rely on Jesus for things, that's hard. Even to this day, it's hard um, because when, when Jesus speaks to me or he wants me to do something, I, I be, having that obedience to mm-hmm. Jesus, that's been a really hard part. But as I've had that obedience, I'm seeing what the Lord is doing in my life and, and, and we're, like having that relationship and building that sense of trust with Jesus has been really life-changing. So but definitely that obedience part was very hard. When I see those stories, how many money, how much money do those OnlyFans models make? They make a like, lot of money. Like millions. Mm-hmm. Millions. Of, and I'm not angry at them. I'm angry at the men. Yes. They pay. You can watch it for free, bro. There yeah. are multiple websites. Yeah. You're paying and you're saying, 
I like it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it again and again and again, more and more and more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay my money. I'm going to vote with, with, the, with the dollars. Yes. And they're making like literally millions. Millions and millions of dollars, which is really sad too, because it's like when money, when people have a love of money and then that's their God, like they, that's so hard to leave. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine like earning 10, 10 million a year. Yeah. How, I, how would you want to leave that if you didn't know Jesus? No way. It's so sad. It, it's so sad. Uh, you do the, in regards to abortion, you do the sidewalk counseling. Yes. What's that? So sidewalk counseling is um, where I go with a group of people from the church and we stand outside of the clinic. Uh, we specifically go to the one in Compton, California. And I essentially talk to every single woman that's going in. So my goal, my mission is to talk to every single woman in hopes that they will not kill their child. So it's, it's very hard. It's a very, it's a very hard ministry. Um, and I truly did not know darkness and the demonic realm until I started going to this Planned Parenthood in Compton. Tell me about it. When I talk to these women that are going in, um, my approach is, well, one, I'm not allowed to step into the parking lot of the Planned Parenthood. If I do, I'll be arrested. The cops will be called on me. So I ha I'm, I'm a little bit of a ways from that clinic and I'm on the sidewalk. So I'm yelling, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? Or, hey, you know, if you're going in for an abortion, I, you know, we have res resources for you. Can we talk to you about that? And these women, I, no, I'm going to go kill my baby. No, I'm going to go. That's what they say. That's, I'm that's going to kill my baby? No, I'm going to kill my baby. Don't worry about me. You do you. You do you, Jesus saying, like, I'm going to go in and kill my baby. They they know what they're about to do. And it is so dark. And I've tried to talk to these women like, hey, you know, if you go in there and you kill your child, like, I just want you to know that that Jesus loves you, that 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 baby before before that baby was in the womb, they knew you and that that you and your baby are wonderfully and fearfully made. And they come out and they say, I killed my baby. They flip me off. It is dark stuff. They're it is possessed. really dark. They are possessed. It's demonic. There's actually a woman that's, that works at this specific Planned Parenthood. And we, we also try to talk to every single um, employee there as well in hopes that they can come to realize that, that God can lift the veil to show them that what they're doing is so wrong and so demonic. And this one woman, every time we say Jesus, she twitches. She, she, does, <laughs> she has like convulsions. And to actually see that, it's, it, she has a demon. Like it, it is so demonic and it is, it's, it's something that you, f you truly feel because it's become very, very tangible for me about what's really going on here. And there's even, there's a car that comes every couple of weeks to come pick up the body parts of the dismembered abortions. And, and I've tried to talk to him like, Hey, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what's going on in there? It's sad, but, um, praise God. I've been doing this for just a couple months now. And about three weeks ago, I did have a mom who did choose life. How? So there was a car coming into the parking lot and it, it was two women. And one of the girls that I was there, their sidewalk counseling with, she said, hey, someone needs to go talk to that woman just to have discernment about this situation right off the bat. And I remember I put all my stuff down and I ran up to that car knowing I can't go into that parking lot. I, I will have such ramification if I do so, but it's Holy Spirit led. And so just knocking that fear of man and having a fear of God, I, I decided to do so anyways. And I went up to this car and I said, hey, are you here to go to the Planned Parenthood? She was like, yeah, I'm, I got to get this baby out of me like right now. And I'm late. So you need to get out of the way. And I was like, hey, you know, if you go in there right now, you're going to take a pill called mifeprestone. They're going to tell you you're just going to have some light cramping and light bleeding and it'll all be over. But what they don't tell you is that you're going to take a second pill at home misoprestrol and you're actually going to induce labor and you're going to give birth to a to a small child at home that you're then going to have to flush down the toilet do you know that that's what you're about to go do she was like what she was like what was her term approximately like how far along was yeah. she she was only about six weeks mm -hmm. at this time so for abortions, um, at about six to 10 weeks, they give what's called uh, a mifeprestone mm -hmm. pill. So you take that first pill there, they make you take it there. They give you the second pill, which is called misoprestol. And then you then, that causes um, you to induce labor. You mm -hmm. give birth to, to your child. But what that Planned Parenthood tells these women is, okay, you know, it's just, you're, you're going to take the second pill at home. You're just going to have a little bit of cramping and bleeding, and then it'll be all over. It'll be all okay. So they deceive, they deceive these women into what they're doing. 
And she looked at me and she's like, no, I got to get this baby out of me. She was very adamant on killing her child. So I told her, do you know anything about the founder of Planned Parenthood? Do you know that she was a racist and that you're falling into her trap of what she has placed as Planned Parenthood here to do? And the woman was black? They were, yeah, they were, they were both, one was Mexican and one was black because she was with um, her cousin and her cousin was like, get out of the way. She needs to go in there and do what she needs to do. You know, it was like, uh, you know, when you have a, a, the, you see those cartoons, it's like the angel and the devil. And it's like, mm -hmm. do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it. And, and this cousin that was in the car was my opposition. Like the sa Satan was using her to say, kill your baby, just do it. And I'm over here saying, don't do it. And so I saw a parking spot had opened up and she was looking for a parking spot. So I said, hey, why don't you go park there and let's talk some more. So she tried to pull away as fast as she could. And um, she parked and I, as she opened the door, I knelt down to her and I'm like, hey, do you know about Jesus? She's like, yeah, I do. I'm sorry, but how did she react once you played the racial card? Oh, she was like, what? I didn't know that. No, no but nobody knows that. She was a I've talked to so many being, yeah Sanger. and Margaret Sanger and I and I've talked to so many women that come out of this clinic just to say hey if you're not here for an abortion you know this this place is just evil and demonic in general and you know if you are a minority that Margaret was her Sanger goal. Mar this was Margaret Sanger's goal for you to be here. She was a she was a racist, and she saw minority as as so unfit to have children that she first created birth control in hopes that you would not procreate. And then she said, "Well, that's not working out, so I'm actually going to make these death mills so that you come here and kill your child." And you're buying into it, and you didn't know, but I'm here to tell you now. And these women are like, "What?" They had no idea. They don't know. And so even sharing that has been life-changing in its own because I'm, I'm sending these women away from Planned Parenthood. But back to this woman, um, and then that's when I just started to talk about Jesus. And she was in tears and I was in tears. And she said, I knew as soon as you came up to my car, I was praying before I got here. She was praying, God, if you want me to keep my baby, show me. And she said, as soon as I came up to that car, she felt the Holy Spirit and, and her heart was already starting to be softened. And so as I'm talking to her about Jesus, she goes, are there other people here? And she goes, people are praying for me right now. I, I feel it. This is a spiritual battle. That's awesome. And the rest of the, the group of people that I was with from the church, they were on their hands and knees praying. She couldn't see them, but she felt it. And she knew it was a spiritual battle. And so after talking to her about an hour, uh, her cousin got so angry. And so her cousin left and she said, you know what? She goes, I'm going to keep my baby. And so I brought her over to the group and, um, you know, we're all in tears and we're just praising God for, for what he did that day. And I, I've, I've been in touch with her now. Um, actually I, I, um, I'm getting her support for Christmas. Um, the giving project is sponsoring her this, this year to support her and her, and her kids. And so, um, it, it's been really, it's been a blessing to be at this Planned Parenthood to convince these women to keep their babies and then to be alongside them in their, in their walk but it's so dark at the same time. Coming back to that woman, to that specific woman that mm -hmm. you saved uh, her kid, uh, did you know the, the reason why she wanted to kill the baby? Lack of money, lack of support, no uh, man? I think for the most part, so she said she did have a, have a boyfriend and her boyfriend was actually devastated that she was going to kill her baby. Um, and so, I, and at that time I was reminding her, do you know how special it is to have the, the, the father of this child to have support from him. But she, 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 she said, I just can't do it. I have two other kids. She already has a five month old and a two year old. And she goes, I just don't have the time or the money to take care of a third child. Mm. And I told her, so, and, and that, and not that, in that moment, I told her, you know, you're faced with a moral dilemma then, because you know, you're about to go in there and you're about to murder your child. But out of what selfishness? I said, if you put your faith and trust into the Lord, he will provide for you for this child. Oh, and so yeah. in this situation, you need to do what's right, not what's easy. But she even knew that she was going to go in there to murder her child. She she knew what she was doing. I've got a very similar story. So uh, a friend of ours, so she had uh, she has three children, right? Three girls, uh, three-year-old, five-year-old, and six-year-old. And she, we were having this discussion about the abortions. And she was like, I'm pro-abortion up to 12 weeks, right? So we're having this debate, why, why not? What happens in the, on the 12th week and et cetera? So in the end, she told me I had an abortion, right? I'm saying, okay. So she's asking me whether she's a bad person. I was like, no, 
just to repent, right? Just like I mentioned before, Christianity is all about, but she's not a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I asked her a question, like, so you've got those three little girls right now, and they're playing here by the pool. Can you imagine if you had the decision made, let's say, three years ago, and you did one more abortion? So out of three little daughters that you have, you only had two now. Mm -hmm. Which one would you like right now to get rid of? Mm -hmm. No, no way. Yeah, so that's the same thing. If you you did this one abortion, so if you didn't, you had you had right now four kids, right? And you would be fine. If you had three, you're, you're mm -hmm. going to be fine with four. She was like, mm, maybe, maybe. That's a good way to put it. It's, it's really sad even when I talk to people who are pro-abortion that have kids. Mm -hmm. That have kids and think it's still okay to kill your child because, you know, I'm not a mom and I hope to be one day, but I can't imagine the joy – that it is to be able to have the experience to birth a child and then to have a child and raise a child, to have that that blessing in your life, and then to think that it's still okay to kill your offspring. It's terrible. Yes, they just change the language. It's not a kid. It's not a... That's true. It's a it's fetus. It's not a child, not a baby. It's a clump of cells. Mm -hmm. That's it. Also, a clump of cells. I can get rid of it, of course. Yeah. Have you ever thought of why Planned Parenthood became such a, a sanctified place that you can't even go outside the Planned Parenthood and protest? Just like you've mentioned, you if you get, get into the parking lot, you're going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple people that are being sent to jail for that, right? Yeah. For years and years and years. Mm -hmm. I think the reason is because it's such a demonic force. Planned Parenthood is ran by Satan himself. These women that are going in there are sacrificing their baby. Uh, just like in the in the Bible, when people used to sacrifice their babies to molt, it's no different. Planned Parenthood is a modern day version of that. And I think when Christians show up to show their light and that light penetrates through that darkness, the enemy does not like that. The enemy is here to kill, rob, and destroy. And if he sees that you're there to get in the way of what he's doing, he's going to try and put a stop to that. I see that all the time. There's so many spiritual attacks that I face out in those streets. And it's like, I don't even mind the spiritual attacks because I know that the enemy knows that I'm winning, that I'm there to pro proclaim the word of God and to do God's work out there to try and save God's children. And the enemy doesn't like that. Yeah, just show me the cross, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, You won't do exactly, shit. I'm exactly. with him. <laughs> who, who are you with? Um, if God is for you, who can be against you? Yes. Amen. So once I did a podcast with AJ Hurley, I was asking him, why did people back then did those sacrifices of children, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't acknowledge the reason. How could a mother or a father, both of them, take their child, the newborn child, go to this statue and put their baby, babies on the hot uh, ends of it and just hear how it screams, right? Mm -hmm. But then, then I just realized that at back, at back then, they thought this is normal. If you want to have, for instance, a good mm -hmm. crop, you have to do sacrifices. This was the the game. Mm -hmm. You do this, you're going to get that. Nowadays, the, change, the rules of the game did not change for them. They do it on their own, with their own free will. Mm -hmm. They go there, they say, I want to get rid of it. Even just you told me that they're saying out loud they want to kill the babies, mm -hmm. and they're allowed to do that. And it, this is normal. And the public says... Why not? It's healthcare. Mm -hmm. You want this woman to to die? If yeah. she's not going to get her abortion, she's going to die, just like this woman in Georgia, right? Which was not true. Yeah, that Once was Once you dig in that uh, story, this is not true. She, to she took the abortion pill. Exactly. She took mifeprestrone. Yes. <sighs> Let's talk fetal cells. So oh, I okay. I love this topic. <laughs> this topic really... It's a conspiracy theory, right? It, it's not true. No, it is. It is. But people will say that it's not true. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fetal cell lines. So you're referring to vaccines being used and tested on aborted fetus cells. Yes. Okay. Just for the YouTube. Allegedly. 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 Don't ban this video. Allegedly. Okay. I'll, I'll try and talk in code word here so we don't get, this podcast doesn't get nuked off the internet. Um, so with the new pandemic um, and the jabs that people were getting. Those are used and tested on aborted fetus cells. They're called fetal cell lines. So basically what they do is they take an, ab an aborted baby, they harvest the cells, they then take those cells and multiply them and they're called fetal cell lines. 
Harvesting? What does it mean? Harvest? Taking, like taking the cells from the organs, and they grow, and they and they grow the cells. Yeah, they grow the cells in a laboratory. That whole thing, I is like very hard to understand and comprehend how those cells are actually able to multiply. Um, but they're called fetal cell lines, and these fetal cell lines that were used and tested on the Pfizer and Moderna jabs. My favorite companies. I, Your favorite. I love them. Yes, My you love them. Um, so Pfizer and Moderna jabs were used and tested on HEK2, I think it's 293, HEK293 cell lines that were used from an abortion in the 1970s to the 1980s from an abortion in the Netherlands. Same with the Johnson & Johnson jab. During their manufacturing process, they used fetal cell lines, PERC6. So the re so when people say, Savannah, why do you not take the jabs? I say, because as someone who is pro-life, I think it is very disturbing that I would take something and put it into my body that was used and tested on an aborted baby. And this is well documented. This is well documented. This is public knowledge. This is actually why there is a, um, so like, let's say you're a healthcare worker or you have a job and, and you want to give a religious exemption mm -hmm. for the jab. Like my mom, for example, she works at a hospital. She, she had a very high position at the time when the pandemic was going on and they told her, you know, you're either going to have to get the jab or you can give a religious exemption. And so the reason that they were giving the religious exemption is because it is a fact that these jabs are used and tested on aborted fetus cells. And that goes against our Christian beliefs. So she submitted her exemption and she said, you know, that the exact reason of, you know, I'm a follower of Christ and I don't believe in killing innocent children and babies. And so therefore I will not be getting the jab because it is used and tested on aborted fetus cells. They accepted her religious exemption. Now, when the Pope came out and he said that it, it's okay to be getting these jabs, even though he admitted, because it is a fact, he's, the Pope said it's okay to get these um jabs if they're used and tested on aborted fetus cells because it's saving people's lives. So only a few lives were taken, but it's saving many more lives. So it's okay. They, When the Pope came out and said that, the hospital revoked my mom's medical exemption and she lost her job because of it. But they acknowledged that it is used and tested on aborted fetus cells. Everybody knows it. But the Pope has no authority here in the U.S. The He's Pope a Catholic. has no authority, but the hospital that my mom worked for took his authority in order for because her it was to get the jab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the so, hospitals in Orange County as well? What was that? The, the hospital that your mom Oh, worked. yeah, in Orange County. Yeah, I'm not going to say the name. It rhymes with Pfizer, so that might help you take a guess. <laughs> but that's a red county. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They do the, the thing. Yeah, and so I, I tell a lot of people about this. That, that's not true. No, okay, don't take my word for it. Go look it up online. It's common knowledge. I wondered if you Googled into your computer right now, if, if, if are the jabs used and studied with aborted fetus cells, it would pop everything up right then and there. Uh, and it is confirmed. But every article you read says, but the Catholic Church has deemed it okay. So therefore, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm not the Catholic. Oh, yeah. But it, but it doesn't matter because the Pope has so much authority over you. If I'm a Muslim. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, so the Pope has authority over the whole world. Allegedly. WF and the Pope are the yeah. rulers of the world. Yeah, apparently the Pope had authority over my mom in Orange County, California. Are the jabs, how uh, how should I type in? Are the jabs used? Are the, I don't want to say it, yeah. but put in the name of, uh -huh. <laughs> of it, used and tested on aborted fetus cells. And, and I guarantee you and, it will come up on multiple platforms and then everything will say, but it's okay because the Catholic, the Catholic Church has deemed that it is fine. I'm just reading. So March 2023, immun immunizebc.ca. Uh, this includes, <laughs> screw it, COVID-19 vaccines. Some vaccines are made by growing the vaccine viruses in human fetal cell lines. However, however, here are the facts about the fetal cells in uh, fetal cells lines in COVID nineteen National Geographic. So basically, what they try to say is that yes, they are using but. them on fetal cell lines, 
but, and there's always a justification for it, usually from the Catholic Church or saying that that the aborted fetus cell is so removed from the fetal cell line that they're not actually using and testing on aborted fetus cells, but that's not true. You got that fetal cell line from an aborted baby. And then it, and then it poses the question that I always think about, what baby was slaughtered and murdered for the sake for the sake of using those cells for this vaccine where did you get that baby where did that baby come from can you imagine being that that soul you're not being even born yet you're in the womb you're a soul already you're a human being you get slaughtered and then your body is used to do this experiment yeah Demonic. That's demonic. Demonic. Like just, guys, just and girls, think of it. Just think, think. And and who makes that decision? Who says we're going to use this baby? Like I and I and I, sometimes I don't even want to think about it, but I I like to have an understanding, and and that's always something I think about. Who makes that decision? Who says we're going to take that baby? What baby was used? I, I would like to actually do more research on that. I bet it would be impossible to find because even the websites list exactly which abortion. These abortions were done in the Netherlands, it says, mm -hmm. between like the 1960s to the 1980s. It tells you exactly which abortions. They have names, H-E-K 293 and P-R-C-6. But then when I look that up, it's very hard to find information on because they don't want you to know how, how much evil is going on you know, they don't want to give you the, the full scope and the mm -hmm. full answers on those things. Because it's just It's so rooted twisted. in evil and, and, it, and it goes so far back that they don't want you to know all those things. Even though, okay, so let's not take human beings, right? Let's take dogs and the Fauci story with the dogs. Mm -hmm. How can you, how can you approve this? Those, so this guy was doing experiments with, with the dogs. Mm -hmm. and someone, some may, may say, so dogs and rats and mice are the same. No, no, no. Why do people get outraged over the dogs being used and not the babies? They do? Did you see the rage? Oh, was, I saw people who like, like to foster dogs. Uh, Peter. They were up in arms about that. And I said, so you're up in arms about dogs being slaughtered in the name of medicine and testing on them for medicine but when it happens to babies you turn a blind eye to it did you see that video so the guy is on the streets and he's he approaches uh, the past buyers and they say and they say say uh, would you sign up for the would you sign up a, a petition to save eagles uh, eggs they're like, yeah, why yeah. not? Oh, and by the way, would you sign the petition to save uh, the babies in oh, the womb? No, no, no. no, no. no. What? Why? <laughs> and why is that? Eagle. That's a fine bird, right? Yeah. It's the symbol of the US. Yeah, but a baby, no. But no. <laughs> I think it's just become so controversial that they don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk uh, feminism. How do you feel about the feminism? <laughs> It's gross. I'm asking you just because you're a woman, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think there. Well, there are white dudes for Harris, right? So there are men. I came male. across white dudes for Harris in real life this week. That's no real. Way. I thought it was a Orange meme. County. In Orange County, I went That's, to a school board Orange meeting. County is done. I went to a school board meeting. Um, I was there to show my support for a policy that um, Chino Valley Unified School District was putting into place. Um, to make it so that there was no secrets kept between teachers and parents and that all pornographic books were taken out of the schools. So That's I was there. Sonia Shaw. Yes, Sonia Shaw. So I was there to support that. LGBTQ community was there, Satanists were there, and white dudes for Harris. With the t-shirts, with the caps? Yes, with the caps. And I thought, and I was looking at them and I'm thinking, I thought you guys were just a meme. They're real. They're real. How about their testosterone level? Were they? Oh, they were. They are definitely had boyfriends or husbands, and were yeah, they were beta males, <laughs> so, <laughs> not alphas at all. Schools, children, parents. What does the LGBT community have in common with schools, kids, and parents? Like nothing. No. Why do they care? Why do they show up? Because they want to have full authority over everything. They want to have complete way of brainwashing. Authority not over their own children. Get lost. It's not. Yeah. That's not your children. Yeah. You can do this stuff to your children, mm -hmm. but to others, that's a hundred percent no, no. Yeah. But they still do that. Yeah. 
How was this whole board meeting? Um, it was interesting. Um, S Sonia Shaw, oh my gosh, she is awesome. She is such a warrior for the truth and for the Lord. Amen. That was a very intense school board meeting. Those school board meetings, have you ever been to one? They no. are unhinged. They're out of control. People are threatening the school board, you know, threatening them, just spewing hate. Just it, it, it was like every single type of person that screams at Charlie Kirk on a college campus, but all put together in one room. And it felt demonic. Those people are driven and ran by Satan. Um, but it was really cool because we had so many people from the church there to show support. And so it was, it kind of turned into one of those things where everyone was just sharing the gospel at the mic. Rebuking the evil. Yeah. I was like, I rebuke white dudes in the name of, <laughs> I rebuke, I re in the name of Jesus, I rebuke white dudes for Harris. I rebuke these Satanists. I, re I rebuke the LGBTQ community. And so then rather than giving a reason of why we wanted to support this policy, we were just sharing the gospel. We were saying, Hey, you know, if you die today, are you certain you're going to go to heaven? If you put your faith and trust in a Jesus Christ, and it was like over and over. So it, it was really neat as, as dark as that school board meeting was and how I felt it, it was like kind of the same feeling that I, that I feel at Planned Parenthood. But at the same time, there was, there was so much love coming from the people of, of, of the church that I was there with. So, uh, but the policy did pass four to one. So God bless Sonia Shaw and the rest of the people that decided to take a stand and be protector of children. Did you see the difference between those who opposed this and uh, were for it? Uh, the ones who were aggressive and the ones, the others were uh, not emotional at all. So, for instance, as, as far as I've seen, all those people that are for AB 1955, they're so angry, they're screaming, they're cursing, and etc. Mm -hmm. The other side is like, calm down. What are your arguments? What's this, the same thing right there? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, they were screaming so much in the mic, I couldn't understand what they were saying. And, they, and it was all about their sexuality. I'm like, what does your sexuality have to do with wanting to not have porn in schools and making sure that there's no secrets kept between teachers and parents? There was actually teachers there in that district coming up to the mic saying that, no, we want to keep secrets from parents. Why? Like, like tell me. Why? The, why? Why? Uh, why? Uh, in the name of love and we have to make sure that these people of the LGBT community are safe. This is an attack on this community. And, and Sonia Shaw even said, I'm so glad that you teachers came here today to tell me that you wanted to keep secrets from parents because mm. like i'm keeping track now like i know who to watch out for mm. what's your name uh, okay yeah You're for it. exactly exactly they are just outing themselves i like how they say that the kids can be gay and uh, because they're born this way uh -huh. but on the on the other side i'm not i wasn't born a boy or girl I, I decided to be a boy or a girl once i grew up Wait a minute so on on one side you're you're being you you you've been born gay but you're not being born a, a man or a woman and you can choose what, why uh, once you grow up that's uh, oxymoron right yes so feminism okay feminism i'm not for it i don't think that we should have any privileges just because of the way that god made us for one human race <laughs> male and female have different distinctions right that we have different strengths but i don't think that we deserve to have any hierarchy because of our genitalia and the way that god made us do you have any friends that are feminists no no i always thought of this so feminists are for the rights of women. Okay, I'm all for the equality, right? Mm -hmm. The same uh, wage, salary, but based on based on meritocracy, right? You do the you do your job, you do it great, you earn a lot of money. For instance, you do sales, you earn a thousand dollars commission, right? The guy does uh, uh, less sales, he gets a hundred dollars. I'm all for it, right? But once we see, we started to see men. That play sports in the women's division. Oh yeah. I was like, what ha what about women's rights then? And where are where the, are the feminists? feminists? Like, where are the feminists? But they consider those men mm -hmm. as women. Yeah, but then the f but then the feminist movement is quiet during that time. And why is that? So I can I can define myself as a woman whenever I want. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm a woman. In five minutes I'm going to be a man again. Mm -hmm. So being a woman means what? It's your choice. So. If you're saying that women have more uh, rights than a, and a man right now, or they should have more rights than males, I consider myself a woman. Mm -hmm. That's it. Check me. And the feminist movement is for having men and women sports. It's not that they don't have a neutral position. It's like they that's what they want because they identify as women. So it's, it's encouraging to that woman, just like you said. It makes no sense. And, and people even tell me, well, what about... 
you know, women who make less in their job and they're ha they have the same job as a man. Okay. If that were true, you would see no women with jobs. <laughs> Companies would not be hiring what, or excuse me, would not be hiring men if that was the case. AJ Hurley told me about this book. Uh, it's, it's called, how is it called? Something about the feminism. So the feminism, uh, you can track feminism uh, thousands and thousands of, year, of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Amazon tribes, the women that did all that stuff. And it's demonic as well. Mm -hmm. So once you read or you listen to that book, you realize that this is the same thing from this. It's on the same page as communism, LGBTQIAA, kids mutilation, transgenderism, uh, uh, implementing this on kids in schools, etc. And feminism is on the same page. But once, once again, once you see that, once you realize that, you're like you're a different person. Mm -hmm. And all those movements that all those movements that you see is like that's straight from the Bible, and they're turning against against God. But I would never think of it that this whole battle is really spiritual. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like, maybe that's business, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they they literally poison you with the glyphosate, with the, all those additives, mm -hmm. Red 40, etc. Just not uh, with the purpose of killing you, but with the purpose of business. Actually, I think it's just spiritual. Mm -hmm. They, they want to do harm to a human being. Because if we listen to the WEF and uh, Bill Gates and all his friends, they're saying blatantly that yes. population is too big. Mm -hmm. the, the earth is overpopulated. They're admitting to their own agenda. Yeah, we have to do something. Oh, but then if you say that, that's a conspiracy theory. But they're saying out loud but they're the saying same thing. It. Yeah. They're saying it. I can literally pull up a tape of Bill Gates saying that, and people yeah. would say that's still not true. You don't understand the context. Yes, yeah, you're taking it, out of context. But, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then you see a, a death toll, right? Right, And the death rate of uh, people having cancer or heart attacks, etc. What does it, uh, what's the, uh, the reason of it? Food, Food number that one, we're eating. stress, mm -hmm. and everything that you do for the human beings. So, for instance, right now, uh, a male is not able to support the family on his own. So, a woman, uh, a husband and a wife have, have to work, right? Mm -hmm. Then, if they only they have to do their job to earn money to provide for the family, on the other side, they do the heinous things to their kids. So, they have to be aware of these things as well. Mm -hmm. Then you have Prop 3, for instance, right? You have no idea what is Proposition 3 in California. Mm -hmm. You have to dig into this. And you get into this crazy spiral of uh, attention. And one, one day, I believe, someone says, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Either he gets on the medicine, on the opioids, and mm -hmm. he gets addicted. Or he, he has his or her thoughts of taking their own life because mm -hmm. it's impossible. To it's a whole in. symptom. And the same people that are creating the sicknesses are the same people that are creating a solution to the sickness that they've given you. Like Bill Gates, he's bought that Beyond Meat, right? And he makes that Beyond Meat and it's full of a bunch of cancer causing chemicals. Mm -hmm. And so once you eat enough of that as a vegan, you're eating this fake meat, then guess what? Then you're sick. So you're going to go back to the doctor and you're going to get a pill that was made and prescribed by Bill Gates himself. It's a whole cycle. It's a whole vicious cycle. And you have to see it in its entirety. You can't just say, oh, it's the food's bad, but I'm going to go load myself up with a bunch of Western medicine medicines. You have to see it, the whole picture just as you explained. Have you ever been a vegan? Uh, yeah, for like five seconds. But really? Yeah. I've been a vegan for <laughs> six months and then I've, then I've been a prescriptarian for 18 months. Okay. But when you were vegan, were you eating like the fake meat or were you no. eating like just raw good foods? Because a lot of vegans these days, they eat that like the beyond meat and all that 50 -50. fake stuff. Yeah. And that's so bad for you. I was craving for uh, literally for sausages. I was going to a store and you're probably them. craving iron. <laughs> yes, red meat. <laughs> and I was buying those sausages made of uh, plants. Oh, Only yeah. back. So what converted me to veganism was a movie on Netflix. Uh, I know what you're talking what about. What the hell? Yeah. I was like, bingo! Like, how could I live for thirty years and yeah. did now did not know that. I have to become a vegan. So my wife became a vegan. Uh, myself became a vegan. vegan. And I felt so amazing, right? After two years of doing this and then being a pescatarian in total for almost two years, I was like, I was devastated. My energy levels like were so low. Mm -hmm. And I believe my testosterone level was like on the floor. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I thought I was doing good. Mm -hmm. If I had back then Bible right next to me that I could read that it says what kind of animals you can eat and cannot eat, yes. I was like, 
also God's purpose was we eat, for instance, chicken or a cow. Yes. And the beef is the most amazing food on, on earth, right? Yes. Then I would never do that. And it's a whole thing there. It's a spiritual thing. The way that vegans eat, the way that they eat, it goes against the way that God designed it for us. Yes. Everything come back, comes back to the Bible and to something spiritual. It really does. It does. Oh, so you're going to those uh, rallies, uh, not... You've been to rallies? I've not Trump? been to an actual rally, You've but been I've been to, to private like fundraisers yeah. for him. How did you get there? So, um, because I've seen photos on your Instagram, it's like with the with the who's who from Charlie Kirk to Daniel yeah, Harris, yeah. To I've Trump, just become so Chelsea. intertwined in politics. Um, so, for the last couple of years, I've been volunteering for the Republican Party of Orange County. <laughs> they actually just um, nominated me this year as Volunteer of the Year. Um, sure. So, I, I work in the office. I do phone calls and door knocking for candidates that are running in Orange County. And so, through the Republican Party of Orange County, I've had a lot of amazing network opportunities um, to be able to go to events and meet different types of people. Um, I've even had opportunities to meet with Donald Trump and speak with his team and be around and involved with their team as well, which has been super amazing. Um, but just volunteering for local government has opened up so many doors and opportunities for me. I've met so many incredible uh, politicians. I've met some that I thought were great that maybe turned out to not be so great that I might not name. Um, but it's been it's just been really being cool. Arrogant? Yeah, just being arrogant, just typical slimy politician where you think they're great from the outside but that but that's been really cool for me to actually meet these people mm -hmm. in person and for God to give me that that discernment about about meeting them in person and having that actual one-on-one -on -one with them like Donald Trump for example having met Donald Trump in person and being around him and seen he's seen him like so many times now I've even gone to Mar-a-Lago and gone mm -hmm. to at a fun a fundraiser at his residence and I don't feel any sense of wickedness or evil from him. Like at being around him, I, I get a really great sense of discernment that he is trying to do the right thing. So I've been very blessed to be able to meet these people, to have that kind of discernment in person, because at the same time, I met a lot of people that I thought, oh, you're kind of giving me bad vibes here. You know, maybe my discernment was a little off about you. So what are your feelings about uh, Trump having his uh, stance on abortions and especially Melania's? Yeah, so I've become very disappointed about that. And I've I've also been vocal about that because he's come out very strongly about his stance on IVF. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be honest. I don't know if he fully understands yes, IVF. Informed? I don't know if he's informed because obviously a lot of these stances um, come from his advisors. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people at the same time just don't know the truth about IVF. So maybe he thinks, oh, okay, you know, they are making the embryos in a Petri dish and then, you know, women are getting pregnant for that, from that. And that sounds great and dandy, but you also have to have your discernment about that. So maybe he does know what it entails. Maybe he doesn't have the right discernment about it. I'm not sure. So I have been outspoken about that, but also try not to slam him at the same time because he, like many other people, just might not know the truth about it. But at the same time, I want to be vocal and point those things out so that when he, if he does become president, he doesn't make IVF so widely accessible as he wants it to be. And with abortion, I think he's kind of changed his stance on that. But I also have to give him, you know, a lot of um, thanks at the same time for him appointing that judge to the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. He's done a lot of great work for saving babies in that sense. So um, I think he's flopping a little bit right now on his stance because I think he's trying to appeal to certain voters. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, he's done a lot of good things. So Do you think Roe Ro versus Wade cost the Republicans uh, the majority? Well, they get the majority, but the red wave in 2022? I think it could have a big part in it because a lot of people think that if Trump comes into office that he's going to have like some total complete abortion ban. And I think when they did see him overturn Roe v. Wade that they're like, this is the start. Like this is this is just him warming up to that. So I think that it does play a part in that red wave that never happened. But can he do that? No, he can't do that. He That's why up he turned it States. back to the States. Yeah. So you and vote. that's how it should be because people say they don't want the government to control their bodies. So he they, he brings it back to the state. So it's a little bit more limited on that aspect, and people are still up in arms about it. This the uh, that's kind of the thing that they're going to have uh, in Florida, right? This November they're yes. going to have this on the ballot, and another few states. Yes. So the state decides whether uh, to go with abortion or not, and uh, what are the uh, the terms of the baby. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think what do you think is uh, the future of the GOP after tr- if Trump? Whether he wins or not, he's out. That's for sure. So, so he's seventy eight, right? Mm-hmm. So he's done. So let's say Kamala gets into office, for example. Mm-hmm. I think that we're not going to have a party anymore, and I want to be hopeful. But you mean the GOP? I think the GOP is being a little bit infiltrated right now. I think they're starting to change their stances on a lot of things. They're just leaving like they a don't lot. Have on top just like three. here. No position on Prop 3. Um, so I'm seeing it hap- happen. Um, but I think if Kamala were to win and then we were to have an election after that, who's going to be the nominee? And ha- and there's going to be so much damage done. I So I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that that doesn't happen, but I just, I'm not seeing a lot of good things happening in the GOP right now. And I think we need more Christians to be getting involved in politics. I think if more Christians get involved in politics, if more Christians join the GOP and we turn back to God in this nation, that's going to be the only hope for our future. You know, the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. And I truly believe that if we turn to the Lord, then that's who's going to continue to bless our nation. But before yesterday's events that took place at the Kamala's uh, rally, right? Mm -hmm. People said that you can be a Christian and you can be a Democrat at the same time, right? You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat. But what happened yesterday, it just solidified this this stance, right? That's exactly right. So uh, for the audience that that do not know what we're talking about, so there was a rally, a Kamala's rally, and someone shouted, uh, Jesus Jesus is King. And she said, you're at the wrong rally. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's getting rid of basically Christians, right? If you are with me... You're not welcome. So if you're, you're a Christian and you're still voting Democrat, you're not very bright. And she you're said not welcomed this. in their party. Yeah, There's not. no room for you. There, the Democrat party says we're all about inclusivity and we want everyone to be welcome. But Except no, you. if you're a conservative or you're a Christian or you're both, God forbid, then you're absolutely not welcome. So if you're a Christian and you're still voting Democrat, you need to know that you're not welcomed in, in that party. There's no room for you. That is the party of the devil. And if you are a true Christian, you do not vote Democrat. And the public, the audience praised her for that. They were clapping, Oh, yeah. Right? They were like, yeah, Oh, yeah, they yeah. love it. So I have this theory. That if they, let's say on January, uh, June, July 13th, right? The assassination attempt mm-hmm. on Trump. Let's say they succeeded, right? Mm-hmm. I believe, or especially if they succeeded uh, the, the second time mm-hmm. and they killed uh, Donald Trump back then. I think that... Every assassination attempt uh, drove more and more people to support Trump Mm -hmm. because they're doing this heinous stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Someone is doing that. But if they even succeed, I believe even more people are about to turn their back on the the other party and say, who's the nominee right now? So the VP, J.D. Vance, I'm going to vote for him Mm -hmm. because you did this on – with the purpose. Why? Why are you trying? We're trying to get rid of the future president and you succeeded. There's a reason why. So I believe that by them doing the, these assassination attempts, they're doing a bad job because both of them dro- drove a lot of people from that party to the Yeah, I remember party. when he got shot even, there was like so many people that were that like came out of the closet, so, so to speak. I saw so many pe- people posting that photo of him with his fist in the air saying, that's it, I'm coming out. I'm saying that I'm a Trump supporter and I'm going to be voting for Trump. Like that was a tipping point for a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to vocally show support for Trump. But in on that day, in that moment, people said, that's it, I'm, t- I'm tired of mm-hmm. this. And so the more that the Democrat party tries to victimize Trump and try to say that he's like Hitler and that he's a terrible person, the more that people are starting to wake up and say, no, he's not. And they're fighting back and they're becoming more vocal. And so they're doing damage by trying to take action on all these things. They're just hurting themselves by doing this. So the same thing happened after he got this, his uh, famous mugshot, right? Yeah. Some people said, that's it, enough. I'm voting for this gangster, yes, right? He's yes. the OG. <laughs> so a few days ago, there was uh, L. L. Smith, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, not a party, but the gathering of people, right? So there was Trump. He was joking around, etc. There was Chuck Schumer. Yes. And, uh, so if they say, so Chuck Schumer or uh, Nancy Pelosi, right? They say, Trump is a Hitler. But you shake. But you're his in the hands. same room with him. Yes. How would you do that? Yeah. You would never if you saw be Hitler in, in real person, would you yeah. shake his hand? Yeah. Would you sit next to him? Would you acknowledge him? You would do anything in your power just to stop this man because he's yeah. a Hitler. He's mm-hmm. a Nazi. He's a fa- fascist. And you've been telling this story for, I want to say, two years now. You know. Mm-hmm. And they wonder why there are assassination attempts. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. That's exactly right. Let's have two assumptions with you. Assumption number one is the president of the United States. His position is the most powerful in the 
entire world, right? Mm -hmm. Being a president of the U.S. Assumption number two is you become one. Once you become the president of the U.S., you have the secret service at your disposal. They say, congratulations, uh, Miss President, we love you. We have uh, all the knowledge in the world. You ask us, we give you an honest, honest answer. What would be your first question? To secret service? Yes. They have all the answers in the world. They're going to tell you the truth. Whatever you ask. Who did 9-11? Once you get the answer, right? Whatever okay. it may be. Okay. Would you expose it to the public? 100%. You're not afraid of the casualties, of the chaos that it may bring? Mm, that's a good point. I think that... Kind of just like the Bible says, sharing the truth in love. I think that whatever truth that we know, we're responsible for sharing. And so I think even when Trump gets back into office this time, how much truth he knows about things, I think he's going to be totally unhinged and he's going to say things. But there is there is a lot of flack and backlash that does come with sharing the truth. So that's a good question that you pose that after because it's not something that I thought about. But I definitely would like to know the truth about 9-11. I think there's a lot of questions and a lot of conspiracy about that. Um, and there I are grounds for conspiracies. Yeah. Um, but that would definitely be something I want to know. Now, usually I'm the type of person to want to share the truth with people, but that would be a pretty hard position to be in because you're right. People would be up in arms about that. Just kind of like Donald Trump said that he's going to, he wanted, he wants to expose, um, everything that happened with, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uncle. Yeah. Right. But yeah. then he said, but I don't know if I can, because it would put a lot of people in harm's way. So that would be a tough position to be in knowing the truth, but then not knowing if you could share it or not, because it could also put people at harm's way. So can people handle the truth? I don't think everyone can handle the truth. I think that they should be able to, but I don't think everybody can handle the truth because I see that a lot in my own life. So that's why we don't hear the, we don't know the Epstein list. We don't know the JFK 9-11. Yeah. Let's take three. Because of cognitive dissonance. They, they'll, people will literally have the truth shown to them and they'll still say that's not true. Even if CNN says so. Yeah. They're not, nah, that's not true. Well, CNN, maybe that's a different story. Anything that CNN says is true to everything. them. Yeah, everything. Let's take three of those cases. So JFK, 9-11, and uh, what's the third one? Epstein. Epstein, yeah. Which one would you like to know? Mm, Epstein, because I think that that... The assassination on Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uncle happened a while ago. 9-11 happened a while ago. But Epstein is a little bit more recent. And I think there's a lot of people that we know of that are maybe in politics now or celebrities that were involved in that, that are have a position of power, that are in movies, that are making music potentially. And I think it would be important to know those things now. Because we're living in it. We're living with those people. In regards to entertainment industry, so R. Kelly was sentenced, I want to say, a decade ago, right? Mm -hmm. For 20, 25 years mm -hmm. for basically being a pedophile. Can you listen to his music still? Mm -mm. Just because of his character? Of what he so. did? I don't think so. I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier. Like, if you know that the, this person who's making this music did all these things, why would you choose to enjoy to listen to that music? Okay, what about Michael Jackson? There were allegations. Nothing. They had uh, no proofs. That's true. Well, I wouldn't listen to Michael Jackson anyways because I try not to listen to secular music. But you do pose a good question with that. So you want to say that Michael Jackson was a secular person? He had the, his uh, this rabbi with him uh, all the way. Uh, Shmuley? Well, that's not Christian necessarily. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably still consider it secular. <laughs> In a sense. Do you think the, on the Epstein list there is a name of, a, of an idol you had uh, previously in your life? Some kind of an actor, actress? I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I, I definitely believe that there is probably somebody on that list that I probably liked them as an actor or their music. And that's why I'd even like to know now. Because, hey, maybe I'm happening to watch a movie with that person in it. And, and I would pr I'd probably like to know the truth about that that Epstein list. I mean, the Epstein, the, the, some of the documents are out there. And I want to know why did Ghislaine Maxwell just go to jail for all of that, but nobody that was involved was convicted of anything. So it was proven that there was sex trafficking going on and all, and all of that was known to be true, but then there was no punishment for anybody that was helping her with that. When you're catching a criminal, you have to be careful to not catch yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're 
it's like oh that's my friend oh no 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 okay maybe, yeah maybe maybe that so Epstein list is one but PDD list PDD list oh my gosh it's I've, happening in front I'm not of even our fully eyes. up to speed on all of that but you know what my thoughts and my theory is on that because remember Cat Williams was saying that <sighs> he would pay podcast. yeah Cat Williams was saying you know that he tried to pay me fifty million dollars what three different times to go over there. Mm -hmm. I know P. Diddy has a lot of money, but $50 million to be throwing around like that. So my theory, this is my conspiracy theory, is that someone higher up is using Diddy to control Hollywood and somebody's giving him that money. Oh, allegedly, 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 100%, 100%. allegedly, I think I don't even think it's a conspiracy at this point because it seems to be pretty obvious, but that I'm not totally up to speed on all that because I know all that. I'm not surprised by any of those things. There's people I know that that, you know, they just maybe have been deceived most of their life and they say i cannot believe what's going on with diddy like can you believe that and it's like yeah 100 i can believe that people were saying that he's a piece of shit a long time ago yeah and but people but but there's so many people that are just like so shocked by this i'm like mm -hmm. could you imagine if you knew the truth about planned parenthood or abortion or any of these things right like i there's so much evil that's going on in this world and and a lot of people are wrapped up in this whole diddy thing but i'm like you have no idea what is really going on in this world if you are shocked about what's going on with diddy by the way, uh, so th when this podcast airs, the 1960 Project movie is already on next on Twitter for free, right? Yes. So the 1960 Project is going to be um, available on the 22nd of this month, mm -hmm. and it's going to be up for a few weeks. So everyone needs to go see that because Seth Gruber, who uh, made this movie with his team at White Rose, has poured their heart and soul into this movie. And it is so important that people come to know the truth and the evil that is Planned Parenthood. So yes, it's going to be on X on the 22nd and everybody needs to watch it and everybody needs to share with their friends and families so that the truth can be just come to light and uh, it's a hard movie to watch because there is there is so much information back there the mm -hmm. dates the people Have the you last seen names it? of yeah sure yeah. the european names like the, the, the from it's hard 19th to follow. century and, mm -hmm. but once you you got the you, see you get all. the whole picture it's like yes, oh, oh. So these people definitely weren't about the women's health care yes. it's that, that wasn't their purpose and the goal the goal was just to do, do eugenics and to basically do the cleansing of especially the blacks mm -hmm. and others, people of color. Mm -hmm. It's truly phenomenal how Seth is able to take all of that and put it into a film. It really is because there's so, it's, there's so much that goes into how Planned Parenthood was founded and the roots of evil all the, all the way back to Hitler, right? And in Darwinism. And so at, at first it feels like it's, it's a lot of information. And then when you get to the end of the movie, it just kind of clicks and it mm -hmm. all comes together. And Seth does a phenomenal job on this film, putting all of that together for people to know the truth. Uh, speaking of movies, did you watch uh, The Letter to the American Church? You know, I haven't seen the movie, but I did read the book. And mm -hmm. I thought the book was phenomenal. Um, and, and, and it is so true. It reminds me of everything going on now. The church is silent. Mm -hmm. There's a disease in this church, and I truly believe that pastors at the pulpit need to speak up and to ignite their church, share the truth with people, even if you think it's con controversial, because that's exactly like in the book and in the movie Letter of the American Church by Eric Metaxas, like that's exactly how they got to where that they are in that situation. And that's exactly how we got to that situation that we're in now with Planned Parenthood, right? The church needs to speak up. So, you know, Seth, as much as he wants people to know about the truth, he's also about waking up the church. Like we need to be speaking up about these things because it's never going to end unless the church does something about it. And that's even why I feel like I have the responsibility to go to these Planned Parenthoods and do something on my own because do you know how powerful it would be if every if just one person from every single church went to a Planned Parenthood and stood in front of there and proclaimed the word of God? How many how, abortion would probably be ended? You know, I, I, if I can go to a Planned Parenthood on a Friday and somebody can choose life, I, I couldn't imagine how much revival we'd see in this country if Christians all rose up and decided to do that. Don't you think that they're gonna just throw you in jail? I mean, they if, could. If lots of people show up. They could, but I still don't think, I think it goes back to when I said you need to do what's right, not what's easy. I think that if, if you truly love the Lord and he commands us to do something and, and, and the Lord has put it on your heart to do that, then I think you should do so, no matter what the repercussions are going to be. I understand when I go to this Planned Parenthood, I know what the repercussions is, could be, and that's, I'm prepared for that. But I feel like if the Lord has put it on my heart to do that, that I will be obedient and that he will see me through it if something does happen.
So right now we have, uh, I want to say, four major movies that are very crucial for every human being. Not even you're not Christian, Christian, not Christian. It doesn't matter. You have to watch these four movies. So uh, 1960 Project, right? Margaret Sanger, uh, Planned Parenthood, Letter to the American Church, what happened in the 30s in uh, Nazi Germany, how the church was silent and Hitler came into the to, into power, and there were even uh, pastors uh, and priests that preached uh, the the Hitler. The, uh, the another one is uh, 22 Words by uh, Jana Machuku. Oh, yes. About the pornography books uh, in school. Mm -hmm. And the last one I want to say is uh, A Line in the Sand by James I Keith. just saw that. I went to his movie premiere. How did you like James is a friend I of mine and um, it's phenomenal. So I think it's, you know, we understand what's going on, right? Like we see it on the news We in, and, and we know that it's true that there is a crisis at this border, but to actually see the tangible evidence of it that James O'Keefe puts together is phenomenal. And the perspective of how he does it, I mean, he actually goes to Mexico, gets on these trains mm -hmm. with these people, like goes as if he's gonna cross the border with them. Like he, he, he comes in from a completely different perspective that we've not seen. And it's so phenomenally done, especially for it being James's first movie, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. And I recommend everybody to see it because it becomes so tangible. Like it's like when you see it you can't unsee it and the guy's young he's 40 years old only. yeah so god bless for those men so Th yes. Sagruder, uh eric metaxas eric metaxas with the book and the movie was made by my friend simone alex and her uh, partner uh james o'keefe and uh, john manchuku yes all of god bless guys. them they're they're doing the lord's work i mean it is so important for people to not have a fear of man and a fear of god and to just speak up on on the truth and I think that that's what those four men are doing, and God bless them for doing that. And it's much easier. It's so much easier to live once you uh, accept Jesus as your God. The truth will set you free. Yeah. yeah, the truth will set you free first, and the second, you just read the Bible and, and you know exactly what to do, how to act, how to raise your children, how to behave, how to act with the, with your wife, right? So it, it says, so we uh, we as a man, we have to love you, our wives. Wives have to. Uh, how it says that's very interesting that um, the Bible does not say that uh, that wives have to love their husbands, but they have to respect them and, uh, and submit to them. Yes, so that's just a. Th you have to think about it as well, but mm -hmm. in regards to children and killings and abortion, etc. So you should be, you should go to the on the. Uh, on the bottom of the of the lake, if you touch a minor, right, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's written in the Bible. It's so much easier to live your life once you submit to Jesus Christ. Read the Bible, and you get into a true church, mm -hmm. which is not a Bible a teaching church. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. So, Savannah, I believe I've, we've touched everything that I wanted. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, God bless you. God thank bless you. Uh, your family. God bless your mom. God bless thank your you. husband. Thank and I you. hope, just like you said, that one day you'll you'll be mother. And I hope you have uh, lots of children. Thank you. Because the demographics in the U.S. is uh, plummeted. Good. Yeah. We have to have more children. Yes. Be fruitful and multiply just as the Lord exactly. wants us to do. And convert them and maybe just raise them as Christians right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We go to the church every Sunday. My son goes to the Sunday church and mm. he learns about the God, the That's Jesus Christ. He asked me all those asks me all those questions so jesus is god or he's the son of god like, <laughs> he is in the son of god and the god himself like, how okay so i'm having this uh, uh, hard time explaining him but at the same time i'm learning as well yes when i don't know the answer it's like pastor or internet how how should i explain this why is this 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 and that so god bless god bless you yes, thank, and thank you. you for coming you as well thank you you're good yes <laughs>